Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to spend some time practicing writing chemical equations and balancing them and all that good stuff from our previous lecture. Now we're ready to move further into chapter six with our next topic. All right, so here we are, types of reactions. As you'll see, the more and more you get used to uh, writing and balancing and identifying those chemical equations, you'll see they tend to fall into a few main types of reactions. So this part of the uh, chapter is devoted to helping you identify those reaction types. Okay, so as you see here, the chemical reactions can be classified as combination reactions, decomposition reactions, single replacement reactions, double replacement reactions, or combustion reactions. These are the five categories that we use, at least in this course, to classify the different types of reactions you'll witness. The easiest way to identify a combination reaction is having two or more elements or simple compounds in our course anyway. In uh, advanced chemistry, it gets much more difficult, but uh, you'll see uh, two or more species, uh, either elements, compounds, a mixture of elements and compounds uh, on the reactant side, and they'll combine to form a single product on the product side. Uh, of course, we can have um, those coefficients out in front of the product can be non-one coefficients based on what we need to do to balance, but we should have only one type of product. That should be your giveaway for a combination reaction. Here we see the formation of magnesium oxide. Uh, so we have the nice pictures to go above our reaction equation. So the magnesium metal, that metallic strip of magnesium, combines with oxygen gas from the air, O2, of course, since oxygen is a diatomic substance. And they combine to form this magnesium oxide product, as you see it, uh, that plume of white smoke, uh, grayish white anyway, uh, and the residue on top of that former metallic strip is now the uh, grayish white magnesium oxide product. And we see we've got oxygen incorporated into the layers there with the magnesium to give our final product. So formation of magnesium oxide is clearly a combination reaction. Next up, we have the decomposition reaction type, and uh, easily enough, this is uh, the reverse of a combination. In a decomposition, we have one substance, one reactant, uh, splitting up into two or more simple substances on the product side. So again, we have either, uh, in this case, it's always going to be a compound uh, on the left-hand side, and then it can split up into either elements or uh, simpler compounds or some mixture of elements and compounds on the product side. But the giveaway here, uh, again, those coefficients can be non-one, but we should only see one species on the reactant side and at least two species on the product side to identify a decomposition reaction. And here we see a nice picture again with those uh, particle diagrams above the uh, reaction equation, but we have mercury two oxide, uh, under the presence of heat, uh, decomposing back into metallic mercury, elemental mercury, and oxygen gas. And this is actually the way that Joseph Priestley was able to produce oxygen, and uh, he was awarded credit with the discovery of oxygen, although that's a topic of much debate, and you've got at least a couple others, uh, including Lavoisier himself, laying claim to the discovery of oxygen. Okay, moving right along into our next reaction type, single replacement reactions. That single should be a nice giveaway. Uh, in a single replacement reaction, we have one element taking the place of a different element in a reacting compound. So on the left-hand side, we have uh, a given element plus a given compound. And then on the right-hand side, we produce a new element and a new compound through a single replacement reaction. A couple examples there down below, we've got zinc metal, uh, elemental zinc solid reacting with hydrochloric acid to yield zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. Uh, the zinc chloride is an aqueous solution, of course. And uh, likewise, we can do the same sort of thing with iron, uh, elemental iron metal plus copper sulfate solution to form iron sulfate, iron 2 sulfate specifically. And of course, it was copper 2 sulfate before that I neglected to mention. Uh, and then finally, producing copper metal as the product. So one element goes in, displaces or replaces, kicks out another element, uh, and we generate that less active element as a co-product. Those are the key identifiers of a single replacement reaction. And again, in our course, it should be fairly easy to identify because you'll have 
always an element in the compound on the left side and an element in the compound on the right side. So clearly you've got two species on each side. It's already distinguishable, at least for our course, from a um, combination or decomposition reaction type. And here we see again a nice uh, picture particle diagram of uh, this process. Here we have that first reaction, the zinc metal, elemental zinc, reacting with hydrochloric acid to form zinc chloride solution and hydrogen gas. So you can see those hydrogen gas bubbles uh, on the surface of the zinc strip as well as bubbling up to the surface of the aqueous solution there. So an element and a compound forming a different element and different compound classic way to identify a single replacement reaction type. So moving on now to the double replacement reaction. Here we have uh, two positive ions in a reacting compound exchange places. So uh, how does it distinguish itself from the single replacement? Well here we have two compounds uh, forming two new compounds by a certain uh, exchange of ions. This is also known as a, a double displacement or a metathesis reaction, if you want to really sound impressive here with your chemistry knowledge. So we have silver one nitrate plus sodium chloride. Those are both in aqueous solution uh, reacting to form silver one chloride solid. So it's a precipitation reaction specifically, but it, it falls into this class of double replacement, which is more generic, plus sodium nitrate aqueous solution. Uh, likewise, we can have zinc sulfide, which is a solid, reacting with hydrochloric acid to form zinc chloride solution and hydrogen sulfide gas. So uh, here we've got two compounds uh, on the left-hand side, two compounds on the right-hand side. The big difference is we've switched uh, ions, or we've switched those first species have swapped their partners. So uh, that's our key identifier of a double replacement reaction type. And here we see again a nice uh, picture particle diagram of that process. So we have uh, a different reaction here. We have sodium sulfate solution uh, reacting with barium chloride solution to form barium sulfate solid. So we notice those particles are much closer together now in the solid uh, and then sodium chloride solution as our co-product. So we've exchanged ions. The sodium that was paired with the sulfate initially is now paired with the chloride in the product. The barium which was paired uh, with the chloride initially is now paired with the sulfate in the product and because barium sulfate is insoluble that's how we know we have a, a reaction occurring. If everything's soluble on the left side and everything's soluble on the right side uh, then we say there's no reaction and that's how we would distinguish uh, when we have a double replacement reaction occurring and when we do not. We could always combine any two compounds uh, and uh, not necessarily get a reaction but in this case because barium sulfate is insoluble and forms a solid precipitate, it is indeed a chemical reaction and a, an example here of a double replacement reaction type. Okay, our final type of reaction that we'll identify for our course is the combustion reaction. And this is one that uh, most of us make good use of, at least in the winter months in Binghamton, uh, because we're uh, using a carbon containing compound, which is the fuel, uh, burns in oxygen uh, from the air to produce carbon carbon dioxide, water, and energy in the form of heat or light. And again, uh, for the example I just mentioned, it's mainly the heat we're after, um, but if you've uh, had uh, the opportunity to have uh, some candles on your birthday and you get to blow those out, there's an example where we're using a combustion reaction for the flame instead of the heat. But if we look, we see a couple examples here. Methane gas, CH4 there, uh, that's the principal component of natural gas. So those who heat our homes with that gas and uh, cook with that gas, that's the chemical uh, formula for it. Uh, and it combines with oxygen, diatomic oxygen from the air uh, in order to make that carbon dioxide and water vapor. So uh, again, it's important that there's enough oxygen around because if there's less oxygen, then instead of carbon dioxide, you'll get carbon monoxide and hopefully you have a carbon monoxide detector in your home if you're doing anything with burning fuels, whether it's propane or natural gas or fuel oil. 
In our second example, we see ethane, a slightly uh, heavier gas, and again, a smaller, much smaller component of natural gas. There's usually a little bit of ethane present as well, uh, and that combines with oxygen also to give carbon dioxide and water vapor plus lots of energy. Uh, again, this is the uh, general theme, scheme anyway, for a, a combustion reaction. Uh, some sort of carbon-containing fuel reacts with oxygen uh, from the air and yields carbon dioxide and water vapor along with that significant heat and light energy. And here we see again that process sort of uh, pictured in uh, a, a particle diagram there, a chemical model of propane, which is C3 H8, so it's the next step up from the methane CH4 and the ethane C2H6 that we saw in the previous slide. Um, and this one combines with oxygen in order to produce uh, carbon dioxide, water vapor, and lots of heat and light. And in this case, it's the heat that uh, that propane torch is using to uh, solder that uh, joint there in the pipe. Okay, so we identified five reaction types, and here's a nice summary table, 6.3 from the text. Uh, so combination, uh, as we said, we've got two species, um, elements, compounds, or a mixture thereof on the left-hand side, uh, and we form just one product on the right-hand side. And we have our example there on uh, the right of the table. Decomposition is the reverse of combination. We have a single reactant uh, decaying into multiple products. For a single replacement, at least the single replacement types we'll see, it's an element plus a compound yields a new compound and a new element based on uh, the uh, reactivity of the element uh, on the left-hand side. The element on the left-hand side is more active, so it displaces what was typically an ion in our case on the uh, left-hand side as the compound, and then uh, that forms a new element on the right-hand side. Double replacement, uh, at least for our purposes, we tend to have uh, two compounds on the reactant side and two compounds on the product side. And again, something's different about one of the products. Uh, the most typical case we'll see is aqueous reactions. So the two reactants are in the aqueous phase. And then one of the products at least is a solid or a gas, uh, and therefore it does not remain in aqueous solution. Finally, the combustion reaction, as we saw, it's some sort of hydrocarbon or at least a carbon-containing fuel uh, reacting with some amount of oxygen from the air uh, in the presence of heat to get it started, and then it produces a lot of heat on its own, uh, as well as some light uh, and carbon dioxide and water vapor. So there you have it, the five types of reactions you'll expect to uh, explore in our course. and. Um, get used to the naming conventions of the reaction types as well as identifying them uh, based on the chemical equation. All right, so it seems like a good time. We've rushed through that a bit, I'm afraid, and so it's a good time for a learning check, uh, and you'll be able to uh, exercise your own skill at this by classifying the following reactions as either combination or decomposition reactions. So one, two, and three. Pause the video here. Uh, take a moment to identify them as either combination or decomposition, and then start it back up to see how you did. Okay, so that first reaction involves two reactants forming a single product, uh, and that's classic combination reaction type. So hopefully you identified that correctly. Our second example, we have just one reactant forming two products, and that's what we would uh, classically look for in a decomposition reaction type. Finally, our uh, third example, we have two reactants forming a single uh, product. That's a combination reaction. So hopefully you were able to identify those correctly. If not, please do uh, practice some additional problems, try the homework set problems, try the end of chapter problems, but we're gonna go ahead and try another learning check anyway so that we all get some extra practice. All right, in our next reaction uh, practice learning check, we have three reactions again, but now your challenge is to identify them as either single replacement or double replacement reactions. So take a moment, identify each of these three as uh, one or the other of those options, and then uh, start the video back up once you've made those assignments and you're ready to see how you did. Okay, so that first reaction, we have an element and a compound, and we form an 
a new compound and a new element as our products, that is what we're looking for to identify classic single replacement reaction behavior. In the second example, we have a compound and a different compound, and they come together to form a solid precipitate, and then the other species still remains in aqueous solution. So that is our classic double replacement reaction. Finally, for our third example, we have an element uh, and a compound forming a different element and a different compound here. Uh, and that's just like the first example, a single replacement reaction type. So hopefully it's uh, starting to come together for you. Again, it's all about pattern recognition, which is one of our important skills in science. And uh, if you're not catching on just yet, don't fret, uh, try more with practice. I'm sure you'll be able to identify these different reaction types. Let's uh, try one more learning check though before we end our uh, chapter 6.2 topic. So in those uh, previous two learning checks, you've only had to uh, distinguish between uh, two different reaction types as possibilities. Here we have all five. So we've got five reactions and we have our five reaction types. So each of these five, please uh, pause the video now to identify each one as either a combination, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, or combustion reaction. Once you've identified all five, uh, go ahead, start the video back up, and we'll see how you did. So go ahead, please pause now while you do that work. Okay, and here we have it. Hopefully for number one, you saw correctly that it's a, a two species on the reactant side forming a single product. That's our classic combination reaction type. Uh, the second example here, number two in our uh, learning check, uh, we have an element and a compound forming a new compound and a different element as our product, and that's classic single replacement behavior. The third example, we have a compound and another compound, all in aqueous solution, forming uh, an aqueous solution of a new compound plus a, as an insoluble precipitate of lead to sulfate. So that's classic double replacement behavior. Number four here, we have a single reactant decaying into two products. That's classic decomposition behavior. And finally, we have a carbon containing species, methane, actually the one from a few slides back, uh, reacting with oxygen, molecular diatomic oxygen uh, molecules in order to produce carbon dioxide gas plus water vapor plus loads of heat and light energy. So that's uh, definitely a combustion reaction type. If this went well and you're ready, uh, please join me for the next part of chapter six. But uh, if it's causing you trouble, please do go ahead and address it right now with some additional practice problems uh, or by reaching out to me for some guided help. All right. Otherwise, I will see you in the next part of chapter six lecture.